Okay, we're going to do a quick tour of the permaculture garden. Um, we have a greenhouse. There's the family chapel right up there. And uh, there's the Hugel Coulter. The backyard is a soil generating factory. Um, it's just wood chips and hay. And there will be a lawn of clover coming up soon. I just seeded last week. Uh, you can hear the birds here are just crazy. The, we, we have dozens and dozens of birds here at all times. They love the soil. They love the bugs in the soil. It's just a, it's just a wildlife gathering spot. The, the pond makes a big difference. It's fresh water for the animals to bathe and drink. And the bees go and drink there. They, they drink the water off the rocks on the waterfall. Uh, I built this greenhouse for $250. It works pretty well. I don't heat it except for uh, a heating pad, a warming pad for the seeds. I lost a couple on that 20 degree temperature last night on the back end. I didn't watch to cover them properly. But I do pretty good here for not heating the place. Uh, there are hay bales all around the sides uh, that help compost and they, they put some heat in here besides the solar energy. Uh, this is the Hugel Coulter. Uh, nothing on here got burnt. There's greens coming up there. I forget what that is. Kale or Chinese cabbage. There's more coming up down here. There's peas coming up here. Uh, there's there's peas coming up here. Right here. Along with some other greens. Uh, this is all wood, logs, and brush is underneath all this, this good soil. And that acts like a sponge. And uh, it soaks up the water and uh, we got mushrooms growing in there. Mushrooms uh, increase productivity of uh, vegetable uh, production. You, you get you get way more production out of a plant that's in contact with mushrooms. Um, here's our honeybees. There's probably 50,000 bees in this hive. It's a very, very healthy and active hive. They've been active all winter. There's probably about 10 days this winter where they weren't out doing something. And uh, they've already uh, they've already tried to swarm on me, and I managed to uh, stall that for now by making a nuke box. Uh, this is a nucleus box. You can see the entrance right there. Where is it there? Oh, here we go. Yeah, there's the entrance. I got it plugged up with a little bit of wax, so it makes it harder for that strong hive over there to. Uh, to rob them. Uh, there's a queen that was just laid in this box. That's why I moved her out. That hive would have swarmed and taken off on me and I would have lost them. But I, I managed to capture them and nix that behavior for a little while and grow another hive. So they're in there. She'll probably start laying next week, I imagine. I'll, I'll check on them next week. Right girl? Right Oreo? She's a good girl. She's just, she's just a baby. She's just a baby. Yeah. Um, and let's see, where do I keep them? Where do I keep them? I keep them in the in here. Uh, needs a little cleaning. There's a little bit of poop on the place where they roost. That gets mixed into the compost. That's gold. And these are awesome. It's always great when you walk in and see this. This is like magic. You know, magic protein that's just incredible. And, uh, that's a quick tour of the permaculture garden. It's about making soil, it's about making good produce, it's about making honey, and it's about getting eggs. And it's, a, it's, it's so rewarding and increases your standard of living. It increases the wildlife that you have to see outside your yard. I mean, I don't see any way that this is, a, this is something that's not beneficial to everyone and beneficial to the planet on a whole. You know, this, this is the future. This is, this is being more efficient and pulling yourself up by your own bootstraps and increasing your family standard of living.